On Charlotte, come with a quick live exhortation to the spirit and power of Yahweh Shai. First and foremost, we want to start by giving all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakah Kudash, double honors to the elders and the apostles of Great Mills, to rule well and teach well, being great examples to his younger brothers, and peace and blessings to the hopeful elect, pushing this word with all truth, righteousness, and sincerity. Shalom, shalom. Um, so this morning, man, we're just going to touch on how. You know, the fear of the Lord gives us the advantage, man, right? Because we see, you know, the, the results of a world that move without fear of Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh, Shai, right? We're watching, you know, the 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 eventual destruction of this, this Babylonian system, right? The so-called America, right? We're watching the the the, uh, the fall of the mindset to the people, right? We're seeing degeneracy at all, all time levels, which is going to lead to, the, you know, the ultimate judgment of the Lord, right? But the fear of the Lord that we have, that we've been blessed with, right, is, is going to protect us in these times of peril, right, as we enter into Jacob's trouble, man. You know, mm -hmm. we're going to have that hedge, you know, Lord willing, we maintain and endure. But I want to grab this definition real quick. This is uh, off of the free dictionary, it reads the advantage. It says a beneficial factor or combination of factors, a benefit or profit gain relatively a favorable position uh superiority of means right because you know we're going to come into a time where you know the, without the fear of y'all about shima was shy you won't have any protection man you know you're not going to be able to you know operate and move because it's just going to be judgment out here man it's going to be those that fear the lord being protected and those who don't fear the lord you know having that judgment upon them man you know mm -hmm. And a precept. This is Isaiah, Yeshaya 33 and verse 6. It says, And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. You know, and those words, uh, wisdom and knowledge, chakama wa uh, yadai, you know, uh, wisdom, you know, going into the, the, the knowledge, you apply the knowledge, you know, and you actually um, um, apply the things that's written in the scriptures. You know, that's true wisdom. And it says knowledge. Which again goes back to the word you die, all right, which means to know. You know, you're gonna know not to do certain things, all right. You're gonna know that, hey, the, you know, the Lord is dealing with you from the experiences. Also, when you go into the word you die, knowledge, all right, goes into being acquainted with because you're gonna have the elect is gonna have uh, been through certain situations, and so they can be like, yeah, like I'm not doing that because you know, I've learned from this situation, I have the knowledge, all right. It says, shall be the stability of thy times and strength of salvation, that, and that's essentially. You know why the elect is going on that straight gate because the, through the difficulties and the different uh, uh, trials, tests, and tribulations, you know you learn and you get the knowledge and you apply that wisdom over that that course of time. You know because the scriptures say, um, a man falls seven um, falls, but seven uh, roughly paraphrased, but a man falls seven times, but he gets back up. You see, and um, you know eventually, you know he he's gonna get it. The elect is gonna get it. You know they're gonna have the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. So it says, shall be the stability of, of thy times and strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. So it starts with the fear of the Lord, because with the fear of the Lord, it, it, it comes wisdom. And then also uh, it comes with, it coincides with that knowledge. You know, the fear of the Lord is going to tell you, hey, don't do this, you know, so that this would not occur, you know, and it's going to be instilled in the elect, you know, and the scriptures say to put on as the elect, you know. Right. And as we see things intensify, <laughs> right, that the the way the Lord speaks to brothers is going to come, become even more uh, prominent, man. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to you're going to hear, you know, that that guidance. Right. Because, as you said, that with that fear comes wisdom and knowledge, man. Right. So you're going to be directed in the correct paths. Right. You're going to have you know that light, you know, be your guide to your feet, man, as the scripture said. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, just real quick. This is uh, Job chapter 28. And I'll start in verse 20. It reads, whence cometh wisdom? And where is the place of understanding? Now, jumping down to verse 28, it reads, And unto man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding, right? Mm -hmm. Because we, we work to separate ourselves from the, this evil world, man, right? You know, we, we depart, you know, in the spiritual sense from Babylon the Great. <clears throat> so, but we're, we're doing all this in order to gain favor 
you know, ultimately to gain that mercy, you know, from Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. Because two thirds mm -hmm. in these heathen are going to receive no mercy, right? So if you don't fear the Lord, you're not going to receive, you know, mercy in these times of trouble, man. And you're going to be completely left to your own devices, which is ultimately going to lead to your destruction, man. Mm -hmm. uh, could you grab um, Sirach 23 and 27? Okay. This is Bon Sirach chapter 23 and verse 27. And it reads, And they that remain shall know that there is nothing better than the fear of the Lord, and that there is nothing sweeter than to take heed unto the commandments of the Lord. Right, it's nothing sweeter, man. Right, <laughs> right, because we we see that that's going to be the only thing of value in these times to come. Man. That wisdom that comes as a result of the fear, man. That knowledge that comes as a result of the fear. That understanding that comes as a result of the fear. Right, <clears throat> it's like because fear and faith, you know, are are you know synonymous, man. Because you believe mm -hmm. it goes into your belief. And the scriptures tell you those who don't believe won't be defended. Right? So we want that defense, we want that hedge. You know, so it it it, it takes that fear of Yahweh by Shimia you know, in, in order to receive that man. Uh you can read 28. Okay. Uh back to Bon Sirach 23 and 27. It reads 28. It says, uh it's a lot. Right here it says, It is great glory to follow the Lord and to be received of Him as long life. It is great glory, man. Right? It's a great glory that we're going to receive in following after Yahweh by Shem Yahweh And you go into that word fear, it goes into showing you know, a great reverence, man. You know, so we show the ultimate reverence to our Lord and Savior, man, through our power, right? Because that's where our salvation is coming uh, as a result, man. Right? So like when it says great glory you know we want to partake in that that uh that crowning ceremony we want to partake you know in that dominion right we want to be those joint heirs you know and to perceive of him is long life ultimately going into that immortality you know so these things all tie into you know that that advantage that brothers are going to have because the lord is not going to forsake his elect man right the, the lord is not going to leave us you know out to dry some of us are going to have to be martyrs, but you know that that's just you know our lot playing out, right? We're 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 going to go straight back to the Father, right? And then brothers is going to come down in those uh, heavenly bodies, man. So it all you know works to our benefit. Okay, got a quick one. This is uh, Proverbs chapter three, and <clears throat> we get verse thirteen. It says, "Happy is the man that findeth wisdom." And the man that getteth understanding, you know, because scriptures say, um, with all that getting, get understanding, you know, going into discernment. So it says, um, for the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver, and the gain thereof than fine gold, you know, because the scriptures say, uh, um, money is a defense and, and knowledge is a defense, but the excellency of, of knowledge is, you know, it gives life to, the, to those that have, roughly paraphrasing, you know. So it's ultimately better, you know, to have the wisdom, knowledge, and understand. But I'm gonna keep going. It says, "She is more precious than rubies, and all things thou canst desire are not to be compared unto her." Because the scriptures will tell you in Deuteronomy the fourth chapter that we're uh, we're kept alive by uh, attaining to this knowledge. You know, subscribing to the the scriptures, we are ultimately able to uh, thrive. You know. That's right. God. Could you grab uh, Proverbs 2 and start in 1? Okay, this is Proverbs. Go to, start at 2, go to verse 9. Okay. This is Proverbs chapter 2. I'm going to go to verse uh, 2. It says, so that thou, I'm going to start in verse 1. Okay, yeah, that's what I meant. That's what it's like. So. This is Proverbs 2. Uh, start from the top. It says, my son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that thou and so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding. Yet if thou criest after knowledge and lift it, liftest up thy voice for understanding, if thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as hid treasures, then shalt thou understand. Because it says, it says searches for her at, Bob, could you get uh, Bonserat 
I think it's uh it's chapter six, verse eighteen. I'm gonna, I'm gonna read it again. It says, "If thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as for hid treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of the Most High." It says something about uh tracing or tracing. Nah, I don't see that one in here. Might be 22. 22. You don't see it. It's all good, but I'm, I'm going to run it back. This is uh, Proverbs chapter 2 and verse 4. It says, if thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her, as for hid treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of the Most High. And essentially going into that, it says, search for her as hid, hid treasures. Because the scriptures say, you know, um, if you find a man of understanding to wear out his doorsteps, it also says to uh, trace after her as a, um, when you go into that word traces, it's essentially what hunters do, you know, like pretty much lie in wait for wisdom, you know. I got you right here. Con. This is uh, Sirach 14. Now starting at 11, or it's like in uh, 21, it reads, He that considered her ways in his heart shall also give understanding in her uh, in her secrets. Mm -hmm. Go after her as one that traces mm -hmm. and lie and wait for her ways. Con, so like, I thought it was chapter 6, my bad. But yeah, it says to uh, when you, uh, a hunter traces, you know, like pretty much li lies and wait, you know, trying to entrap the wisdom, you know, because the wisdom is what's going to, the wisdom knowledge and understanding of the scriptures is what's going to deliver us um in these times that we're coming up into you know but, but i keep going in that proverbs uh this is proverbs 2 and 6 it says for the lord giveth wisdom out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding he layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous he is a buckler to them that walk uprightly right he keep buckler going to that defense man right that protection right that that shield right that that uh that chest armor Right, so uh, uh, the wrist arm is all, you know, all that protection that we we receive, you know, is coming at the uh, through the wisdom, knowledge, understanding that is, that is that gift as we read in the previous verse, right? He he gave us this, right? He gave brothers this this grand opportunity, right, to receive this protection in these times of uh, trouble, in these times of peril, right? So we have we have to do our our part. Right, you know, the scriptures tell us, <clears throat> do good unto thyself and give the Lord his due offering, man. So, this is our offering, right? The, the time, the sacrifice that brothers make, right? That <laughs> offering to Yahweh Yahweh Shai in order to receive that mercy, that protection in, in these times. Let me keep going. It says, verse 8 He keepeth the paths of judgment and preserveth the way of his saints. Mm -hmm. Then shall thou understand righteousness and judgment and equity yeah every good path <clears throat> so like i said he keep it the paths of judgment and preserve it the way of his saints man so the the elect have have already been preserved right there's already been uh provisions made to take care of brothers man to take care of your sisters and your families out there man right all these things have been set in line from the beginning of time right so as we're we're, we're, we're seeing the the uh, the benefits of fearing the Lord start to play out, and we're going to start to see those things, you know, ramp up and intensify. Now we're going to go through, you know, various trials and tests, right? You know, to to prove to be proven ultimately, but at the end of the day, the, the benefits are going to, you know, uh, greatly outweigh, you know, uh, whatever uh, negatives that we might face. Man, as you read in um, what is it, Romans eight chapter, right? You know, the things that we go through can't be compared. You know, to the things that we're going to receive and receiving salvation and receiving you know protection in these times you know is is, is far greater than whatever persecution you know whatever uh, turmoil that brothers may be put into uh, you can um Bible Kushal grab proverbs 29 and 25. this is proverbs chapter 29 and verse 25 it reads <clears throat> the fear of the, of man bringeth a snare but whoso putteth his trust in the lord shall be safe all right so fear in man right fear in esau fear in whatever you know uh, uh you know carnal devices that are out here 
That was a snare. It's a trap, man. Right? But fear in the Lord, when it says you put your trust in the Lord, it goes into, you know, fear in the Lord. That word uh, trust going into uh, your faith. Right? Because as I mentioned earlier, fear and faith, you know, are, are you know, intertwined. Right? They, mm -hmm. they're, uh, they, they work in the same fashion, man. You know, so that fear of the Lord, that trust in Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, and it's going to lead to your safety. You know, the, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run and let up into it, and it's safe, man. You know, having that name and understanding, you know, the fear of the Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai is going to offer you that protection. Uh, let me see what we got here. <laughs> uh, you can grab uh, Proverbs 1 and 7. Uh, this is Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 7. It says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Mm -hmm. So, the beginning of knowledge, the beginning of wisdom, right? You know, is the fear of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. But we see these fools, you know, just going back to the, the, the madness that we've been seeing taking place this week. Right with these these agent provocateurs, uh, with these uh, what's called scoffers and scorners, false prophets, you know all these things you know taking place. These men don't fear Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, right? And if they don't repent, you know they're gonna receive a harsh judgment as a result of it, man. You know, so they they despise the wisdom and they despise the instruction. The instruction of what of the scriptures, man. You know, because we've been given. You know, strict instructions on how to how to maneuver. You know, once you start to understand this book, you understand that it, it gives you instructions on every facet of life. You know, every way that you should move, man. So this should be your your first counsel. You know, uh, uh, is to you know tap into the scriptures, man. But we're watching men who don't fear Yahweh about Shema You know, forsake that wisdom, right? To forsake that instruction. You know, because they ultimately have no fear of Yahweh about Shema uh, let me see here. We can grab uh, Sirach second chapter, uh, starting. We'll just start in verse eleven, and we'll just read out to eighteen, and then that'll be it. Unless you have anything else. All right. So this is Bon Sirach chapter two and verse eleven. It says, "For the Lord is full of compassion and mercy, and long suffering, and very pitiful." And forgiveth sins and saveth in time of affliction. Uh, so like, it's like starting at ten, it's like yeah. or starting at nine. <laughs> uh, so like, this this bond to the two in verse nine. It says, "Gave that fear of the Lord, hope for good and for everlasting joy and mercy." Look at the generations of old and see did ever any trust in the Lord and was confounded, or did abide in his fear and was forsaken, or whom did he ever despise that called upon him? Right. For the, you abide in the fear of Yahweh by Shimei Shai, you won't be forsaken, man. Right? That's why it says that. You know, every every story, you know, that you see our forefathers overcome, you know, their trials and adversities, you know, it's because they had a fear of Yahweh by Shimei Shai. They had that reverence, you know, of the Lord, right? Which gave them that advantage in those times because they, they were given the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to be able to maneuver, man. The spirit was dealing with these men. Verse 11, for the Lord is full of compassion and mercy and long suffering and very pitiful and forgiveth sins and saveth in a time of affliction. Woe be to fearful hearts and faint hands and the sinner that goeth two ways. Woe unto him that is faint hearted for he believeth not. Therefore shall he not be defended. Right. Woe unto them that is faint hearted you know, because they believeth not. They have no faith. They have no fear. So they will not be defended, man. Right. And that's the that's the last thing you want is to be out here with no defense. You know, the the two thirds have no defense. Esau Edom has no defense, man. These heathen have no defense. But the elect, you know, you brothers and sisters that believe, right? Because belief, you know, is a, a key component, man. Right? If you believe, you will be defended in these times, man. But like I said, woe to them that with fearful hearts and faint hands, right? Because you're not uh, willing to do the work as a result of fear of the the consequences of the world or the you know the the ire of your your friends and family, right? So you you're afraid you know to to fully dive in, but if you fear if you have the fear of the Lord, 
you understand that that surpasses and supersedes, you know, whatever feelings you might have toward these people out here, man. Verse 14. Woe unto you that have lost patience, and what will ye do when the Lord shall visit you? Mm, you they stop, that you stop pushing, right? You put down the plow. <laughs> you know, you 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 lose patience. You know, patience. It, what's the scripture say? And your patience possess you your souls, man. So if you lose patience, that you lose your soul. Which you lose that that protection, right? You know, a lot of a lot of people lose patience because. You know their their faith starts to 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 uh, wane, man. Right, their and that fear of the Lord, you know, starts to dwindle. You know, that's why you have to continually pray, you know, to the Lord to re renew your faith, right? And to sometimes to renew your fear, man. You know, because you understand that this is the Lord's moving, man. He he just has you playing a part, right? And you want your part to be, you know, on the winning side. They that they that fear the Lord will not disobey His word. And they that love him will keep his ways. Mm -hmm. They that fear the Lord will not disobey his words. Right? Obedience is better than sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Right? So those that fear Yahweh are not going to be disobedient. They're not going to be in this rebellious state. They're not going to be, you know, out here, you know, marching up and down, trying to, you know, have round twos with Palestines uh, in, here in America, man. You know, we're, we're not going to see that. From people that fear the Lord, you know, you believers out there, right? Well, you're going to move in the ways, you're going to keep the ways that we've been taught, man. Verse 16. <clears throat> they that fear the Lord will seek that which is well pleasing unto him, and they that love him shall be filled with the law. Uh huh. You see, well, that's what, uh, what's well pleasing unto him. Now, you're going to do whatever the Lord sees as, as well doing. You know, we're we're doing whatever the Lord is, is looks favorably upon, you know, in order to receive that mercy, because that's the whole the whole point of you know what we're doing is to receive mercy and to receive salvation, because right? we don't want to get caught in this second death out here. Right? We don't want to take part in this judgment. You know, we we understand what's to come, and we don't want we don't want no smoke, man. Right? right. So in order to not receive, you know, of what we're gonna see happening. We have to continue to do those things which are well pleasing unto the Lord, which is, you know, the fasting, prayer, right, doing these lessons, you know, studying, right, all all manners of you know, uh, fellowship, you know, you know, praying for brothers, you know, all these things, you know, and are, are well pleasing to Yahweh by Shimei Shah. Uh, verse eighteen. Seventeen. It says, "They that fear the Lord will prepare their hearts and humble their souls in His sight." saying we will fall into the hands of the lord and not into the hands of men for as his mer his majesty is so is his mercy right and that's the advantage that we have man right understanding that the lord's majesty is so great you know it, uh whatever esau edom can do you know can't can't measure up right he can't put his hands on the elect man right so when we fall into the hands of the lord you know he's gonna catch us man you know the rest of this world, the people in the world are falling into Esau's hands or falling, thinking they're going to be in Esau's hands. And he's about to just drop them, you know, let them fall into other darkness. But we're, you know, humbling our souls down, like it says, right? We're preparing our hearts, you know, getting our houses in order, you know, in order to receive that protection from Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shot. Mm-hmm. Because Esau is nothing more than the middle man, you know. He's the, uh, the Isaiah 10 and 5, you know, going into the, the actual Assyrian, but you see, but you can apply it to Esau Edom because he's um, the hegemony is in charge of like the uh, the captivity. You see, he's nothing more than a, a pit bull or like the what they call like the, the puppeteer. He's not the puppeteer. He's the puppet. You know, the ones that's that's controlling everything is the Lord. You know, so it's it's uh, ultimately better, you know, to um, fall into the hands of the Lord, you know, because he's the one that's in control of everything. Uh, but that was all I had. I had no I'm gonna read this definition back one more time and then we'll close out. Just going to, you know, the fear of the Lord, you know, is our advantage, right? It says a beneficial factor. This is off the free dictionary. A beneficial factor or combination of factors, benefit or profit, gain, a relatively favorable position, superiority of means, right? Because you know we're gonna be in a superior uh state right you know we're gonna have 
you know, the, the favorable position, you know, when we see this place collapse. All these things taking place, right? You know, the, as we watch America fall apart, you know, you know, as they go down, you know, brothers is going to be lifted up, man. You mm -hmm. know, so continue to fear the Lord because that's our advantage, man. That's our, you know, uh, our favorable position. That's our superiority, right? That's the, the we're going to see the benefits start to take place, right? As the standard of uh, Babylon the Great falls and the standard of Yahweh and Yahweh Shai begins to rise, man. I appreciate it. This is Bon Sirac. Uh, <laughs> Let me see if I can find it. Uh, here it is. This is Bon Sirac, chapter 33 and verse 22. It says, In all thy works, keep to thyself the preeminence. Leave not a stain in thine honor. All right, keep preeminence. Our preeminence, are, when you go to preeminence, it's pretty much superiority. All right, and what's the superiority that, um, right, that we're going into? We're talking about the fear. It all starts with the fear. Going back to Isaiah 33 and 6, it says, uh, wisdom, and, wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy time. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. You know, roughly paraphrasing. So the preeminence, what keeps us preeminent is the fear of the Lord, you know? That's right. Sorry. Come on, come on. Hey, so, you know, we pray that lesson was edifying through the spirit and power of the power of God. I look a quick, you know, more an exhortation going into the fear, you know, how, how it's going to be. You know, extremely beneficial in these times to come, you know. So again, we pray that lessons that divine to the spirit and probably how about Shemel Shah. We want to close by giving all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Baha Sham, Yahweh Shai, Baha Sham, Rakah Hakodash, the honors to the elders and the apostles of great millstone who rule well and teach well, and peace and blessings to the whole elect, pushing this word with all truth, righteousness, and sincerity. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, Yahweh Mahar. <coughs>